The first thing we'll do is draw a horizontal tube representing the subclavian artery. Now this will be the right subclavian artery, so blood will move through it in this direction, from left over here to right over here. I'll circle the R to remind us that we're drawing the right subclavian artery. We can also say this is medial over here, and over here this would be lateral. So remember, blood's flowing through in this direction. I'll write BCT over here to remind us where this branch is from. Over here I'll draw the first rib. The first rib is a landmark to determine where the name of the vessel changes from subclavian to axillary. Now the anterior scalene muscle passes over the middle of the subclavian artery. Its medial and lateral borders, represented by the dotted lines, are used as landmarks to divide the artery into three parts. I'll label those parts 1, 2, and 3. The first branch, the vertebral artery, will pass up the neck running through the transverse foramen in the cervical spine. The second branch, the internal thoracic artery, runs down the inside of the anterior rib cage, just lateral to the sternum. Next to the medial border of the anterior scalene, I'll draw the thyrocervical trunk. Now the thyrocervical trunk has three branches of its own. The first branch is the inferior thyroid artery, and this extends upward to supply the lower portion of the thyroid gland. The second branch, the transverse cervical artery, this runs across the front of the anterior scalene. The third branch, the suprascapular artery, runs posteriorly to pass over the transverse scapular ligament over the suprascapular notch. The second part of the subclavian artery will have one branch, the costocervical trunk. Now I'll draw that close to the medial border of the anterior scalene as well. The costocervical trunk has two branches. The deep cervical artery is going to pass back between the transverse process of C7 and the neck of the first rib to run up the back of the neck. The supreme intercostal artery is going to supply the first two intercostal spaces. The third part of the subclavian artery will have one branch, the dorsal scapular artery. The dorsal scapular artery supplies the levator scapuli, the rhomboids, and the trapezius muscles. So down here I'll write 3, 1, 1. These numbers represent the number of branches off of each part. 1, 2, 3 here, 1 here, and then 1 here. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider clicking like and subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted to all my latest videos. For more helpful anatomy and physiology study resources, visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.